In this video, we're going to discuss the concept of a Pigouvian tax in economics. So remember when you have a negative externality and how that can create a market failure, where you basically have a situation where one person is imposing costs on another person, but not reimbursing that person for those costs. So let's say, for example, that you had a situation where you have two roommates and one person is a smoker and the other person doesn't like smoke or they're worried about secondhand smoke and so the one person by smoking is imposing costs on the other person the roommate by their action and they're not if they're not reimbursing or paying their roommate for what they're doing or they don't have some kind of agreement then we have what's called a socially inefficient outcome otherwise known as a market failure and what a Pigouvian tax is is it's a corrective tax that is set equal to the marginal external cost. And the marginal external cost, all that means, it's a little wordy, all it means is the cost to people other than the smoker, right? So the private cost, the marginal private cost to the smoker is the smoker saying, hey, if I smoke, this, you know, X, Y, and Z may happen to me, but the external costs are the cost to everybody other than the smoker, for example, the roommate. So if you set a corrective tax, a per unit tax, for example, every pack of cigarettes that the, the smoker smokes, and you basically set it equal to the external cost per unit, right? So the cost that the roommate incurs for every pack of cigarettes that's smoked or so, by doing that, you can actually bring about the efficient, the efficient, the socially efficient outcome where the smoker is smoking the socially efficient number of packs. So I want to graph this out for you, but let's use let's use a different example. Let's talk about traffic congestion, which can also lead to a negative externality. So when you have traffic congestion in a city, let's say that there's an additional person who's saying, hey, should I start driving to work or should I take public transportation or whatever? And so they're going to weigh their private costs of doing so right but they're not going to be thinking about they're going to think about fuel they're going to be thinking about all their private costs but they're not going to think about hey if i start driving that's going to make congestion even worse for other people that's an additional car and that might make it to, the other people take longer to get to work right people aren't thinking about other people and what their commute times are you think about your own commute time and your own you know cost of fuel and, and so forth so let me graph how that this can lead to a negative externality and, and how a, a Pigouvian tax can play a role. So let's say that the marginal social benefit of, of driving, and, and so instead of thinking of traffic congestion, let's actually map this out as miles driven. Let's say we're going to set a Pigouvian tax on miles driven. That'll be the quantity, right? Because we're not going to think of a quantity of traffic congestion. We'll think that miles driven, basically the more miles people drive, then the more traffic congestion you're going to have. Let's just let's just say that that's our situation, right? And so we've got our marginal benefit. We've got the marginal social benefit or demand. We can think of this as the demand curve for miles driven, right? So there's some social benefit from people driving cars and, and, and trucks and so forth, right? They need to transport food or they need to do different things, right? There's commercial purposes, there's private purposes, people need to go to a hospital. There's a social benefit to people driving, but the more and more people drive, there's less and less social benefit, right? When you're thinking, hey, I just wanna to go to the convenience store instead of walking, there's less and less social benefit there. Now, we can also map out and think about, well, what is the marginal social cost? So let's say our marginal social cost, that's our marginal social cost curve, and the marginal social cost is going to equal the private cost to that person who's weighing whether or not to drive, that decision to drive, plus the external cost, the cost to everybody else in terms of increased traffic congestion and, and so forth, right? And there could be other costs to driving a lot of miles, increased vehicle fatalities, but let's just focus on traffic congestion to make things easier. So let's think about this individual and let's say that they're, let's, let's, let's map out now their marginal private cost. So this is the marginal private cost to that individual who is deciding whether or not to drive right so whether or not to drive so they're just going to say hey what's the cost of fuel and so forth if i decide to drive they're just going to be thinking about their own private cost right now you see that there's a difference between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost so in equilibrium where we're going to end up is where the actual equilibrium 
absent any Pigouvian tax or anything, is going to be, we're going to be at, we'll, we'll call this Q prime. And this is going to be, this is an inefficient, this is socially inefficient outcome, but this is the equilibrium. If free markets reign and we don't do anything, this is going to be the equilibrium. And so this is going to be the number of miles driven. And let's just say that it's, let's say that it's 100 million miles or something like that. Okay. Now, so this is the amount that is driven. Now, what is socially optimal? Well, socially optimal is where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. From a social standpoint, that's where we want to go with the number of miles driven. So we want to be where the, the quantity is where marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost. That's considering everybody, not just that one individual. And that is going to be right here. Right? So this is going to be the socially efficient quantity. The reason is, see, look, this is where the marginal social benefit, this curve here, where it intersects with this curve here, the marginal social cost right there. That's our optimal quantity. So this is the efficient, this is the socially efficient equilibrium, that, but that's not where we're at, right? Unless, unless we have this, this Pigouvian tax. So what the Pigouvian tax is going to do is we're going to say, hey, this difference here, we've got a way of solving that. What we can do is we can actually set a tax right here for, the, for this amount, Right, that difference between right here and right here, we can set that as a tax. So let's uh, roughly correspond to here. I'm trying to make that this is the exact same thing here and here. So that's going to be the amount of the Pigouvian tax. So the Pigouvian tax. And, and let's just say, for example, that this, I don't know, that this was $75 right here and that this was let's say $40 and the tax would be the difference, right? It'd be 35. I'm just throwing numbers out here. I don't know if any of that makes sense uh, in reality, but let's throw that out. That's just the amount of the Pigouvian tax. It's a corrective tax. And what you're basically doing is you're forcing that individual to say, hey, I can't just think about my private costs because now this tax got added on. And what does the tax do? Well, it basically gives you a per unit charge for the cost that you are imposing on other people so you're just charged the government is just saying okay look we're gonna step in there's a market failure we're going to charge individuals for that external cost so they're not just considering their private costs but they're also considering the external costs and so you can charge them for example on the number of miles driven maybe you, you tax them you know if there's thirty five dollars per mile driven or something that, that sounds ridiculous now maybe I should have chose a lot a lot lower numbers but you get the idea right so you charge them for the external, uh, the, the activity that generates the externality, you have this per unit charge, this Pigouvian tax, and that basically forces the person to internalize this external cost. Okay, so now they're not just going to be weighing their own costs and benefits, they're also going to be thinking about uh, society, right? But, but okay, now here's another thing to think about. There's, there's what's called a double dividend with the Pigouvian tax, a double dividend or a double benefit. And what this means is that with the Pigouvian tax, and Pigouvian tax has been applied to a lot of things, right? We already talked about cigarettes, traffic congestion. There are a lot of different people even talk about using it for like capital volatility. And so, so there are a lot of people talking about different ways to use Pigouvian taxes to affect, to bring about a socially efficient outcome, right? But there's a second benefit and that's this double dividend is that we're also raising revenue. Right, we're raising tax revenue here, and actually this amount, and right here, and I'm just going to put little stripes there. And I know, I know that's a little. Maybe I'll just color it in. It's a little hard to see. I made this a little ugly. I apologize. But this amount here, that's colored in this square, is actually tax revenue. So this is tax revenue. So now the government could say, Hey, look. Well, now that we've got this tax revenue, what we could do is we'll say we'll use that money and we'll actually provide wider lanes on the highway so that'll actually help reduce traffic as well or they could take the money and they could give it to uh, some kind of issue for uh, early childhood education they could do whatever they want but the idea is here you're getting two benefits you're bringing about the socially efficient outcome but you're also you're also generating tax revenue that can be used for some other purpose now the Pigouvian tax is, is basically a similar idea to what we're talking about with you might have heard of a carbon tax but with carbon tax, you're not actually 
taxing like for example somebody produces steel and in this the process of producing steel they generate a lot of carbon or, or greenhouse gases or whatever in that case the Peruvian tax will be directly on the steel output itself but here with carbon tax you're actually you're taxing what's called like an effluent tax you're actually taxing the emissions and not the actual output so it's a little bit different but it's a similar thing now sometimes people will say hey look you know Peruvian taxes are nice but to know the Peruvian tax, we need to know what is the marginal external cost. We need to figure that out. And if we don't know that, then how can we really set the tax and so forth? And some other people say, hey, look, that if we know the, the external cost, then we also know the optimal quantity. We also know the socially efficient quantity. And if we know the socially efficient quantity, why don't we just set the quantity and say that's the that's the total amount we're going to allow of miles driven or carbon or, or whatever. And that basically leads into the idea of marketable permits, otherwise known as cap and trade. And we'll talk about that in the videos to come.